Hi everyone, my name is Jaco. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Cliniserve. Um, we're a startup based in Munich and our mission is to make nursing better. Today he I'm here to talk to you about our founding story, what we do at Cliniserve and my key learnings as a founder in the, in the health tech space and especially focused on, on business modeling. I'll start uh, with an excurs to our founding story, how we came to be how I got to know my co-founders and how the idea of Cliniserve um, came about. And actually it all started here in Munich where we studied together with Quirin and Julian, my co-founders here in the picture on the right. And at the end of our studies, um, we went to the US for uh, an exchange program. Julian and me were at the UC Berkeley and Quirin was at uh, Georgia Tech. And um, because we knew each other from before, Kirin came to visit us in uh, California. You can see here on the picture, we're at the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, together there, we spent a prolonged weekend and we're talking about what we're gonna do after our studies and, and came to the conclusion that for all of us, it would be important to, to have a big impact um, with what, whatever we do and that we all have this shared spirit of wanting to build something together um, and we actually I remember this moment where we were at a horse race and I was talking with Quirin about the problems that our grandmas who are actually in um, needing some more intensive care uh, and more uh, services from our healthcare system what kind of problems they have and we realized that uh, it's really a passion for us to to work in this space and that it would be really important for us to to use our technical uh, abilities and knowledge and our enthusiasm to, to change something in that area. When we came back to Munich uh, from California, we um, started ideating together as a team on what could be changed in the healthcare space and realized that one of the biggest problems of our time is basically summarized quite well in this picture. Um, here you can see a nurse frustrated, burned out, stressed and just overworked. And I think it's a um, good picture of our time of what the healthcare system looks like. And especially now, after the COVID-19 pandemic, we all know uh, what a um, big weakness of our system it is that, uh, that our nurses are so overworked and that we um, are really having problems there. So already in 2017, when we started working on this, we, we saw these studies uh, like the one here from the Bartelsmann Stiftung, which shows that we obviously, with an aging population in Western countries, we have a huge growing demand of, of care and care personnel. And at the same time, the attractiveness of the occupation and the change of our social structures doesn't mean that the supply for nurses is gonna grow at the same pace. So we have this big uh, gap growing between the supply and demand of nurses. But we believe this uh, system is, uh, or this problem is not as simple as this. And it's not just enough to look at ways to find more supply, um, but we should actually try to find out and understand where does the demand come from and what is, what is it actually that nurses are doing and how can we change the way nurses work. And we found in studies like this one, it's actually already from the 2012, but it visualizes the problem quite well that nurses in acute care, so in a normal hospital, um, not intensive care station, um, only spend 15% of their time on patient care and other activities like walking, communicating, coordinating, housekeeping uh, take up to 85% of their time. So there's a really big uh, problem that the people who were educated to take care of the patients in the hospital are actually only spending 15% of their time on that. And that's how we also defined our mission at Clinic Service, that we want to change the way nurse, nurses work and that they can really spend at least 50% of their time in the future just taking care of patients and everything else can be improved through digital processes and uh, automation so that they really focus on what they were educated for. Based on that, we, we started building our product and um, the product vision is really that we, on one hand, um, change the way care work is coordinated within the hospital setting and also later in uh, stationary care for elderly, for example, um, so that the delegation of tasks happens more efficiently and that nurses don't have to take over tasks that could be taken over by service personnel or other less qualified personnel who are not meant to do the medical work and that also in the future things are automated with the use of robots, for example, uh, in the logistics within the hospital. 
Uh, on the other hand, we think that we need more flexible and future-proof working models in care so that not all nurses have to do these three different shifts either in the morning, in the afternoon or in the night, but it can be more flexible and nurses can also work in different departments uh, within the hospital or even across different hospitals uh, on demand. And this way we, we believe we can grow to our vision of 50% of time spent with patients and more efficient uh, working conditions in, in care. Let's start on the, the delegating tasks more efficiently side and I'll explain to you a little bit in more detail what our product does. So um, it's basically a task management solution. The idea started really with this super simple use case of currently when a patient lies in the bed in acute care, if they need something from the, the nurse, they have this one red button that they can press and then basically the nurse can assume that it's either the patient is having a heart attack or they just need a glass of water or they need to go to the toilet or something as little urgent as that. Um, and it doesn't allow any sort of delegation to the, to the su suitable person or prioritization of work um, and it always leads to an interruption for the nurses. So what we build is simple software where the patient can use either their phone or a, a tablet next to their bed um, to communicate to the nurse whatever they need and if it's a service thing like for example something to drink it can be taken over by a service person. So it doesn't even have to go to the nurse, they don't have to be bothered about it. While we built the solution, we understood that now we, we have this mobile interface for nurses that also enables other communication and other coordination of other work. So for example, when patients get transported within the hospital to the um, Röntgen or to the, to the surgery room, all of this involves a lot of um, talking on the telephone and coordinating and this all can be automated and improved uh, with such a solution. So currently today the, the solution is not just used for communicating with patients but also for coordinating internal processes. And first case studies of our solutions though that already we can save 25 minutes per nurse per shift just by making all of this coordination um, better and avoiding the interruptions and the the walking back and forth and talking on the phone. At the same time, obviously, you can imagine it increases patient and nurse satisfaction, so it just makes the whole hospital setting um, nicer for everyone. On the other hand, our solution um, where we basically make working models for more flexible or support more flexible working models, uh, we call it staff disposition. So it's about helping hospitals uh, fill the gaps when people, for example, fall ill or if there are uh, shortages of personnel within shifts and um, overall it gives the, the care managers who coordinate a big pool of employees or big uh, chunk of employees, can be thousands within the hospital, um, gives them a better overview of who is planned when, when in, the, in the shifts and gives them an overview of how different departments of the hospital are having shortages of personnel and can help them coordinate finding uh, solutions within their own organization for that. So for example, it allows um, all nurses to have a smartphone application where they get requested, for example, in the, uh, let's say, in the um, birth station, they're missing a nurse because somebody fall ill. They can also ask the, the, um, the other departments if somebody would be available to take over the shift. And it's also better for the, the nurses because they get rewards uh, using this system. So if they take over shifts that they were not planned to take over, uh, they will get reward points which convert to either more holidays or more um, cash bonuses. Um, yeah, and this way we basically help hospitals find uh, people if shifts have to be taken over because somebody fall, fell ill. In 20% more uh, cases we get a, uh, we actually manage to find an, a replacement within the organization. And it also in decreases the time that these managers spend trying to fill in the gaps so the managers can actually uh, focus on the more long-term things and not just this coordination all the time. Our business model is software as a service, so we basically provide hospitals this software um, solution as a service and help them reduce the or improve the efficiencies of, of their care and they pay us um, a monthly fee for the usage and uh, currently we're in uh, over 15, I think already 20 hospitals in the German speaking region. Uh, some of our um, public references include hospitals like the LMU clinic here in Munich or the university hospitals in Schleswig-Holstein, Gießen-Marburg, Mannheim or Mainz. And um, 
yeah, basically we've established the solution. We've, with first case studies, found out uh, what the benefits are and are now growing within the German-speaking region and in for, uh, first other European markets. And we also have uh, found that working with partners is extremely important in this business. So we've partnered with bedside terminal providers who basically provide the best interface for our patient software to be used. We've partnered with uh, logistic robot providers uh, that obviously want to also enter this healthcare market where they can provide use cases in, for, for the logistics within the hospital. And then uh, the companies that provide mobile devices to hospitals like ASCOM and Zebra. Um, we also partner with those uh, because we basically have a similar uh, sales use case or there's a lot of synergies between us. So that's basically a, a short introduction to what ClindiServe is, what we do. Here you can see uh, our team at our rooftop uh, here in Munich. And uh, we're um, supported by Plug and Play, Bayern Capital and Miele, who are our investors. Um, yeah, and growing currently in the German speaking region. And of course, also always looking for um, new partners, new employees. So if you're interested, I'm happy to uh, get in touch. Maybe the easiest way is that you find us on LinkedIn and, and write me a message. And um, I want to also give you the chance to, to see our solution in action. So if you want to see how the future of patient service will be for you when you go to one of our customer hospitals, you can uh, scan this QR code and enter the code on the screen and just try out our, our application uh, there online. And before we wrap up, I wanted to talk about the, the learnings that I've made uh, on our journey as entrepreneurs in the health uh, space. And especially looking at what, does, um, what do business models mean and what does it mean to actually uh, create a business model and live it every day. And I, I, I summarized it in three learnings, uh, which I'll talk about now. Number one is adapting. Um, I think it's very important to have a good business model and put solid thought into how does the business model work and what are the assumptions that you need to prove uh, within your business model. And uh, a good plan is, is very important for entrepreneurship. But at the same time, I think it's very, very important that you accept that uh, your business model will live over time and you will have to make changes, not just when assumptions change, but also when uh, the situation around you changes. Um, for us, maybe the a big learning was um, the, obviously the whole Corona pandemic for the whole uh, healthcare industry was a, was a big change. And for us, it meant surprisingly, for example, that the Corona pandemic led to new legislation. We now have in Germany the uh, Hospital Hu Future Act, basically. So it's called KHZG in German. Um, and what this means is that the, the government is now giving a lot of uh, subsidies for hospitals if they invest into um, digitalization within their, within their processes. And because this, um, the subsidy is coming from the government, it has to be in the form of an investment. So our software as a service model, where we obviously give more flexibility to our customers by not having to invest into a solution, but they can just pay uh, by use, um, meant that we had to change our business model as well, because we had to be able to offer um, to be able to access this money from this pool of uh, coming from the state, we had to change our business model as well so that we sell our solution um, so that they can um, then get access to the subsidy because they're investing into something and not uh, increasing their running costs. My second uh, learning would be building partnerships. Um, I think there's this uh, kind of stereotype of an entrepreneur having a big vision and kind of not caring about the, the incumbents and uh, being kind of the radical uh, who comes to, to an industry and completely changes it. I think it can be the case in, in many cases, but I think in, in healthcare especially, it's very difficult. Um, it's a very complex environment and going it alone can be quite tough and can actually, um, it can be quite naive to try to do it that, that way. And for us, we often tried already in the beginning to find sales partnerships and try to uh, like tap into the resources of existing companies. Um, but we often found out that it's, it's difficult to, to rely on those because you never know what their incentives really are if you partner with someone and whether it actually will, um, will pay off. So you definitely need to make sure that you do your sales uh, yourself in the beginning and that you build your product uh, based on your vision. But never uh, should you um, 
should you neglect the fact that building partnerships, especially in the long term, so when you're out there for three, four years, um, it can be really valuable to have these partners in the healthcare industry because, for example, for us, uh, having partnered with these bedside terminal providers provided suddenly, now after the, I think, our third year of existence, a very good sales channel because they basically already have the customer contact and um, customers are buying their solutions because they want to have this uh, communication aspect between patients and nurses also covered. So, so if you build good partnerships and if you find synergies uh, with partners, it can really uh, drive your success and it can be really decisive for your company. Um, but at the same time, uh, of course, you shouldn't rely too much on, on partnerships for your success. Finally, um, my third learning would be minimizing complexity. This applies to everything you do as a, as a founder. It's always about focus, focus, focus. Um, whether it's about your product, minimizing kind of the, the amount of features and trying to focus on really what provides the biggest value to your customers. But it also comes to your, uh, or applies to your business model. So trying to, trying to minimize the different uh, variables and trying to minimize the different complexities that uh, drive into your business model to, to make sure that um, you're really always focusing on the things that matter the most. And you realize it, for example, when you start to grow your team and you have to onboard employees and explain to them the different uh, aspects of how to, for example, now in, with regards to the business model, how to do sales and uh, what the pricing is, uh, to which aspects to focus on and um, what is decisive for the customers. So I would always say that uh, don't just think about focus in, in the product, but also in the business model focus on the, on the decisive things that make uh, the difference for your business. With that, uh, I'm finished with my presentation. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, I look forward to getting you getting in touch with me and us having a conversation and I wish you a nice day.